Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. Hey there, welcome to the first part of another quick installation guide. This time we'll be installing WinUAE and also programs and WHD load on a native PC hard drive. The first thing we're going to need on this guide is WinUAE itself. And you can download the 32-bit or the 64-bit zip package or the installer. And once you've unzipped that or once you've installed that to your PC, these are the directories that you'll be able to see. And it's very basic installation. And you can see in the configurations, there is nothing at the moment. And the Amiga programs also give us an extra set of programs that we could use on the Amiga side. One of those is called TransROM. And if you use a disk to copy that over onto a PC, or maybe if you have a Gore-Tec drive, maybe you can copy that onto an ADF, which you can copy over onto a real Amiga. These are the instructions that come with the emulator, TransROM, you copy that on a floppy disk if you can, but that requires us to have 720k PC floppies enabled on the Amiga, which isn't opportune. But if you can somehow get that file across to a real Amiga, then you can open the shell and from wherever you've put that, you can then operate that by typing that in. And we want TransROM. In this case, we want to divert that to DHO. And also we want to give that a file name. We'll just call that kick.rom. And that will create a file wherever we want that to go. And hopefully it is there. So let's try and find it. And there it is. So all we need to do now is to copy that back over onto our PC using a reverse method of what we did before. Perhaps putting that onto an ADF and using a Gore-Tec drive to copy that across. You can see if we list that ROM, it has to be a certain file size, 524288, and that's the file size for Kickstart 3.1, because we're ripping this off an Amiga 1200 at the moment. So once we have our Amiga 3.1, Amiga 1200 file on our PC, then we can hopefully use that. So you can see on the left hand side is an installation that I have already, and that's my main installation. And on the right hand side is our new installation that we're installing for the first time. So let's create a directory, snapshots, which will help us if we need to take any snapshots on our emulator, and also a ROMs directory that we're going to need to copy our ROM into. So that isn't critical as long as you point the computer, the program, into the right place for the ROM, it will find it. But if you create a ROMs directory, it can be very helpful. So these are the ones that I have installed on my PC. So what we need to find is the kick ROM that we took off our native Amiga 1200 setup. Here it is. And this is the one that we copied over from the Amiga back to the PC again. You can see it's 512k. It's the same file size, so we have to make sure that that's the right ROM, and we also have to make sure it's under the right file name, otherwise the package WinUAE might not find it. So if you copy the exact file name from the archives online, or even from this video, you're supposed to rename that ROM to that precise name of whatever that ROM is. In this case, it's a kickstart. 3.1 ROM from the Amiga 1200. So we're just going to go ahead and rename that to exactly the same file. Kickstart 3 from Amiga 1200. It's 3.0 as a matter of fact. So that's what we're going to be booting into on our sample 
Amiga Drive. So now that that's copied over onto the ROMs directory, it's time to move on to the setup of the program itself. And you just need to double click that and it will bring up this option screen where we configure our new WinUAE setup. You can see this is 4.40, which is an old version now, but this is when I recorded it. And the first file folder tab, we can select our different directories. And the main directory is, of course, wherever you've installed WinUAE to in the first place. So that's the system ROM. We need to point that towards the system ROMs directory. And so we have installed that the sample into our buffer and so scan of the ROM's finished it's found something but we're only scanning the Amiga Amiga it's not actually scanning for the system ROMs so we're still gonna have to change that to the ROMs directory let's click on that and let's see if it finds the ROM yes it does the Amiga 1200 ROM has been found there it is so we can now use that on our new setup the configuration should be the install configurations directory that we found before and then where we're we moving to now this is the screenshots directory all set up save states videos save images you don't really need to bother with them at this stage and the rips either you can create a separate directory for those and the output well we really don't want the log window unless it crashes so Moving down to the ROMs tab, first of all, we can now set that to the Amiga 1200 ROM that it's found. It's saying that it's 3.1 at the moment, but that's what it's found. It's the Amiga 1200 ROM that we managed to pull out of our Amiga 1200. And configurations is blank at the moment. So in the CPU tab, we want to set that to all 20 Amiga 1200 and the same for the CPU frequency as well, Amiga 1200. That means it runs as fast as Amiga 1200 should do with cycle exact switched on. And you can leave all of the other modes and settings basically at their default value for now. The chipset is AGA and you can leave everything else I think on default the extra chips well we can set those to the 1200 as well and we'll leave cycle exact off the moment but that's how you switch cycle exact on the ROMs we've already set up so we'll need to give this computer some memory let's give it two megabytes of chip memory and we won't bother with the slow installation memory that we can get from the trapdoor slot instead we'll go for z2 fast ram which is zorro 2 speed fast ram and as we increase the z2 fast ram buffer that will increase the amount that we have on chip so let's increase that all the way up to eight megabytes and we can leave the zorro 3 fast ram alone and everything else for now let's just have two and eight which is a nice compatible configuration Let's eject those disks, whatever we've got in the disk drive, because we're not going to need disks right at the moment, but we are going to need disks to install Workbench on our computer. And Workbench is not critical if you want to use ADFs, but it is if you want to use WHD load. So in order to get an idea of the TOSEC, an idea is to go to the old games finder that will list the official TOSEC names of the Workbench disks that we need to find sometimes you can find those online but for the most part you're going to be struggling to find those you can see there are six disks in the workbench 1.3 archive and if you can't find those online we can also buy those the legitimate way from amiga forever and so if we go into the rom toolbox first of all we can select whichever ROM we like from those which are installed. Let's select 3.1 and in ROM to file. That will convert the ROM file in Amiga Forever to a file that WinUAE recognizes. Then if we select the output folder and click write, that will then write that file into that folder. And then we just have to rename that for WinUAE to recognize it. And whilst we're here, we can also grab the official workbench disks as well. Let's extract those they're in rp9 format let's extract those to adf and for this we'll have to find the directory where you've installed amiga forever and that could be in any number of different places but 
it looks like this is installed to our program files directory and here you should find a shared directory which has in there the workbench files as rp9 files and also the amiga roms as well so let's select workbench and as our output folder what we're just going to do is basically select the ADFs folder which is blank at the moment select those and start that task and we should find that if we check out that directory now the ADFs are full of the workbench ADFs the very first workbench and the very last one as well all of the ones that we need the 3.1 ADFs that we're going to need for this install all of the ROMs are there as well, but the workbench directory is empty because we've just converted all those to ADFs. So now that we have those workbench ADFs by one means or another, we can now insert them into our very first directory, the very first machine that we're going to use to boot into, because we're going to install all of this onto a native directory onto our PC. Not in HDF and not onto an Amiga drive, we're going to install that onto our PC. So let's make sure that floppy file emulation speed is fast as possible. We don't need to worry about CDs, but we want to install a couple of hard drives at this point. And we can select a hard file or a native Amiga hard drive from here, but what I want to do is to select add directory or archive. And what that will do is to add a native directory or archive, a zip archive that is, from our PC. So from here we can select the directory that we want to use as our native Amiga hard drive on our PC. So what I'm going to do is, well this is the directory where we've installed this to, let's just create another folder, let's create another folder, let's call this Amiga HD and that will be our Amiga hard drive. You can see we can put spaces in that name, it's not really recommended but you can do that and the device name DHO DH1 and so what am I going to call this one DHO for this one and the label let's call this files let's make sure that rewrite is on and that it's not bootable for this one and let's select OK that will create a blank hard drive that we can now use let's create a second hard drive let's call it DH1 let's call this our workbench drive and this isn't essential but it comes in handy and for this let's select another hard drive for this let's create another folder on our native PC and call that workbench now that we have our workbench directory on our PC we can now select that we can make sure that it is bootable and that it's read write that means that we can read write to the thing and it will load and its boot priority is zero that means if we've got any floppy disks in the drive they will boot quicker and expansions I'm not going to worry about that RTG and our hardware info so let's select our native display whatever we've got that to set up native in 32-bit mode and we'll have full screen for this and we can also set up our VSync at this point as well if we want to do that and let's see we don't really want to change many of these tab options and double buffering on that screen might help if your emulation is a bit slow you can see everything is already set up on the sound screen the game ports is fine we can set up our joystick in the second port we've got a joystick plugged in a virtual joystick or a real one or a USB one or even a retro USB one so let's select that and Windows mouse at the top if you put HID compliant mouse that will work with any mouse that you plug in there all the rest of these things you can leave on standard the output is if you want to save any screenshots and now the filtering of the screen we'll need to set this up because we're going to use an LCD so let's switch off the filter the point by linear filter let's switch on the automatic scaling mode so that, that will automatically scale and we're using a 169 monitor so let's select 169 from the correct aspect ratio box you can see in the corner and 69 there it's listed 69 first of all 
and then the disc swapper we don't need to bother about the miscellaneous seems to be set up and the priorities are fine so now that we've set up our very first Amiga Workbench we've got the Amiga Workbench drives in I'm going to click PC to enable PC drives at startup that will put icons on our workbench to show the PC drives so that we can access those that can definitely come in handy now we're going to save up our current configuration this is a stock Amiga 1200 setup which is the most compatible one out of the lot especially for WHD load and that's definitely the one that I'd recommend as a stock standard Amiga so once we reset into that, that will now boot up from our disks. And you can see that we've got Workbench in there, which is blank at the moment. And you can also see files as well. And RAM disk, which again is blank. And all of these drives at the bottom that you can see are actually PC directories. So if we move the installation disk from the workbench that we've got, the ADF, which should be in there, drive one, we've booted from the floppy disk now at the moment, so hopefully that will be able to boot from that, and you can select install from that, and then from here we can now select the English install, and that will now install workbench, and it will ask us where it wants to install workbench and for this it's Workbench 3.1 and so let's proceed with that let's install release 3.1 you don't really need to read most of this language setup and everything else unless you want to change the language from here intermediate will do so that we can select where it goes to and proceed and do you want to install it yes we really 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 want to install it and so we can select no for that which partition do we really want well we've selected we've created a partition called workbench that we've called dh1 let's select that and proceed and in my case it's english and we really don't want to install any printer drivers and key maps well we can install a british one and so now it's checking workbench for obsolete files well it's a brand new install so there should be nothing on there and now we can get on with copying all of those files and it will say please insert this 2 please insert this 3 please insert this 4 and eventually once you've ejected all those disks and put in all the new ones on this one it says there is currently not enough room on workbench to fit the amiga standard rom set which is not appropriate because this is a flexible Amiga hard drive so it should have enough room on there to fit everything but that's just a warning to say that the Amiga fonts aren't copied over so that means we'll have to copy the fonts over manually which I will cover in a later guide but for now it's copying over all of the rest of that workbench onto our new workbench drive on our PC and that means you can then reboot the machine and that will now reboot hopefully into our workbench remembering of course to eject at this point the ADF that we got off Amiga Forever the Amiga install disks will need to eject those floppies before we press the reset button and now you can see it's rebooted it has loaded into our brand new workbench that we've got on our PC and you can see access speed of that is very fast because we're not relying on fast file system or pro file system or any of those we're booting directly off our PC hard drive so it'll load as quick as a native PC hard drive does so that means file accessing is great and we can also access those files from our native PC side as well which means we don't have to drag and drop things into HDFs and all these fancy Amiga HD files you can see that it's got all of the files on there that we've just copied over from the disks they should all be on there it accesses them all nice and quick and you can see that there is a background on here called the backdrop which isn't really appropriate these days so you can switch off the backdrop by ticking that option and that will switch it off and in order to save that we'll need to select the disk icon hold down the right mouse button and that will 
bring up the pull down menus from the top of the screen and if we select to snapshot the window all that will do is snapshot the current window on the screen and so if we reset that that will not preserve the background that you can see here at the moment so what we're going to do instead is switch that off select both of the hard drives that we've got going on and select snapshot the file instead of snapshot the folder and what that will do is it will memorize the background so that, that won't switch on and so we'll move into deeper operations of workbench in the next part of the guide